create or even modify textures for Combat Mission Shock Force. We'll also talk about some basic concepts that involved in the creation of those textures. This is not meant to be, of course, a comprehensive course uh, on the subject, but just to get you started doing the textures, especially painting them. I use Adobe Photoshop, but you can use any graphics program, any software you like, as long as they have similar features and tools to the ones I'm going to be using. First thing we need to understand is how light affects the objects. If we intend to simulate that, then we need to have a clear understanding of the how that works. So here we have a 3D object receiving light from a single source at an approximate angle of 45 degrees. Usually, and in the case of uh, combat mission shock force, objects are going to be outdoors and receiving light from only one source, the sun. So we're not going to get into multiple sources or any kind of sophisticated illumination. Even when you're working with uh, very complex light setups, multiple lights and multiple uh, colors of lights and all that, when you paint the textures you imagine just one light source that makes the whole process easier and more straightforward. We can divide the values that you see in the object like this you have the shade, the, the lighted surface, uh, which is the basic color of the object, which is in this area here. We have the highlight, which is this almost white spot where the light uh, source hits the, the object flat on. Then we have the shade, which is this uh, not so strong kind of shadow. And then you have the shadow, what you call the shadow which is very very strong shadow where you almost don't see the original color of the object or where it receives no light at all. Then we have the reflection. This reflection is caused by the light that affects this surface here and bounces back to the object that is sitting on the surface. Then we have the cast shadow which is the shadow that is projected uh, by the shape of the object that is receiving this light. And here we have another object, more like a box or something, uh, for you to have an idea of the same uh, principles affecting a different kind of object. And as you can see in these edges here, it's got a little chamfer to it, which makes it look more realistic. So when you're painting textures, if you can simulate that, your textures are going to look more realistic than a flat, a sharp edge like this one here. Because in, in nature and in objects uh, made by man, usually the, the edges are a bit blunt. So they have a little chamfer to them. They're very rarely this sharp. So you can simulate that in your textures as well. Here's another object that we're going to be uh, we're going to be doing a texture to simulate this kind of uh, geometry because I think this is very typical of the kind of textures that you're going to have to be painting the kind of uh, geometry and volumes you're going to be have to simulate some round surface some open area here and then some volumes with some chamfered uh, edges here is the same uh, the same geometry as seen flat from above from the top and as you can see the same principles apply you have a light source coming from the upper left corner affecting this object and it's projecting a cast shadow here and a bit of a cast shadow inside as well as you can see the, sh the light affects this area here and uh, the chamfered area gets the light almost flat on as well but not the top of the surface. So we're gonna, looking at this print as, as how the light affects the object, we're gonna paint our textures taking into account this, okay?